Hey, today we're going to talk about what scientists don't understand about God. How is it we can do some amazing and sometimes unexplainable things? Like heal our own bodies by the power of our thought. Mother's intuition. The law of attraction. Can we really tap into our subconscious mind? Can we really create our own realities? It begs the question, are we novice gods? All right, I am super excited to share this with you today. We're going to talk about what scientists don't understand about God, what they don't understand about the nature of God. Now, before you get all uptight about this, if you are somebody who believes in science, I believe in science. I love science. I love the things that it creates and the understanding that it gives us in the world. Now, if you've watched the pilot episode of this, you saw that uh, I'm questioning that idea that we descended from apes. I think there is another answer. Now, before you send me hate mail, before you, <laughs> you, know, you start getting all upset, if you are a scientist or a scientific person, or that is your core belief that, yeah, there was this big bang and you know, we descended from apes and we are evolving and the whole nature of we are a species and stuff like that. If that is your belief system, great, go with that. Believe that, and this video might not be for you. Because I am not here to change your beliefs. I'm not trying to convince you or to convert you to my way of thinking. The intention of this video is to help people who are spiritually minded, like myself, who are kind of wrestling with this idea that, well, wait, but how can I believe in God and believe that we're his children if science says we descended from apes? You know, what do I do with that wrestle? And I think that there's a really big key factor in the nature of God that science doesn't take into consideration. And, uh, and I'll share that with you with a story. So the year is 1989. I'm 18 years old. I have a girlfriend and a grandmother. Well, my grandmother is sick. And actually, first, let me just back up. My girlfriend is a wonderful girl. A wonderful girl. Uh, I've known her for, I don't know, maybe three months, and she's the kind of person that just brings out the best in you. When we were together, we would go to firesides all the time, and the firesides were like Sunday evening, um, I don't meetings <laughs> to for the youth to help them be more spiritually minded. She helped me do service. She helped me do a lot of great things. She introduced me to friends that made me become a better person. We did a lot of great stuff together. She was fantastic, and I loved being around her. Now, at this time, my grandmother was sick. She was up at the university hospital, and it was a Sunday evening, and I thought, hey, we could go, and we could serve her, and we could visit her and cheer her up. Well, as we're up there visiting my grandma, the nurse came in, and she needed to do something to kind of help her, and I felt uncomfortable you know, because it's kind of lady stuff. And so uh, I went out into the lobby and, and my girlfriend came out with me and feeling a little uncomfortable, I decided that I was going to goof off. And I saw on the table there, there was a book of scriptures. And I said, okay, I'm going to make a prophecy about you. And I took the scriptures and I just flipped them like this and I put my finger in there and it landed on a verse and it said, yea, she did steal away the hearts of many. My jaw hit the ground. I couldn't believe that what I had actually said kind of made sense. I mean, not really, but, but it was specific to her. And then she took it and she was upset at me. I'm, my jaw is still on the ground. I'm still nervous about her thinking, what the heck just happened? And she takes the scriptures and she flips and I watch her eyes because I knew that I had not flipped through to find something. And I watched her eyes and she just went and put her finger in there, right in the center, and it said, yea, he will take upon him death. Isn't that fantastic? Now, what I gained from this is that God has an amazing sense of humor. And I think most scientists, most of us, maybe don't pay attention to his sense of humor. And, uh, you know, if you really pay attention, anyway. So, if you're looking at, okay, there's all this science, there's fossils, and there's carbon dating and whatever they, you know, the scientists see as evidence that shows, you know, that maybe evolution was a thing and maybe, you know, all these things looking back, maybe that's a possibility. You know, you might also want to pay attention to the fact that maybe God might be messing with you. 
He has a fantastic sense of humor. I think, you know, tongue in cheek, I could say he's got a wicked sense of humor. But he can play with you. If that is what you would like to see and that you would like to have those facts, he can kind of maybe get you a little distracted from the way that will bring you the greatest joy. Now, I'm not saying that he is purposefully trying to get you off track. He wants you to have faith. He wants you to believe. This is all about belief. And life is all about love. Uh, the whole reason that we're here is about love. So anyway, I just wanted to share that with you, that, uh, that if you understand the true nature of God, that he's got a sense of humor, and that he maybe has some other intentions out there for you, and that you can put faith first, that may make some of those evidences have a little bit, make a little bit more sense. And instead of focusing backwards on what could have, might have possibly happened back there, I want to look forward with these, uh, with the possibilities. Now, um, before I leave that, I want to share with you one quote about faith that, that I have loved. And that is in the 1947 version of the Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, they said this line, they said, faith is believing when common sense tells you not to. It's really easy to believe in the stories of science and they have all these facts and things, you know, that are backed up there. But believing in something you can't see, it takes a bit of faith. But there is amazing evidence and we're talking about that. We're looking at all that through this documentary series about how we could do some amazing and sometimes unexplainable things, such as the placebo effect. Look at the placebo effect. It comes up every time they're doing clinical trials of a drug. In fact, the whole reason for doing those clinical trials is to prove that the placebo, you know the placebo, right? This is where they give you a fake pill or even do fake uh, surgeries and, and other things that make you think that they are giving you actual medical treatment, but instead it's, it's maybe a sugar pill or there's nothing to it. But if somebody believes it is going to make a difference in their life, it does. And the more convincingly you give them this sugar pill or, you know, the, the procedure, such as, you know, one, two pills is better than one. Injections are better than pills. Procedures, whoa, those are really effective. And the way the doctor administers it can make a difference on the person's belief. If they believe it's going to help them, it helps them. And the, the results are pretty staggering. It's like between 12 and 75% cure rates when you do the placebo. So anyway, we're going to talk more about the placebo. Amazing stuff. There's other things like muscle testing. Have you ever seen that? This is where, you know, you can put your arm out where somebody else will actually do it to you. This is maybe the more effective way. And if you say a truth, you're nice and strong. If you say a lie, you know, my name is Carla, you don't have as much strength. Well, I have been in rooms where people have been muscle tested and they put something behind them that they couldn't see. They put some celery behind them. They tested them nice and strong. They put some candy behind them. Whoa, they went weak. Like our, our souls, our spirits, there's something about our energy that recognize, recognizes when things aren't healthy for us. And it makes a big difference. I was in a mastermind with a group where they had a box. We didn't know what was in the box and they tested this guy to see his reaction to it. And when they put the box next to him, he went totally weak. You know what was in that box? $50,000 in cash. Was, were they saying that, they, that, he was, that the money was bad for him? No, he didn't feel worthy of it. And we worked with him to change his beliefs so that he could be strong and felt worthy of that. It's amazing stuff. Like there's something about our bodies, about our souls that is connected and that is outside of our body and connected to all these things. So, I mean, those are great things. We, we talk a lot about manifesting in this show. My daughter manifested Alexis. If you haven't seen that show, you got to watch that show. Uh, I did uh, Dr. Emoto's experiment on rice. Check out that show where um, where I, I cooked some rice and I put them in two different jars and on one I would take it out each day and I would think thoughts of love towards it and on the other one I would think thoughts of hate and within just a week or so the one that had thoughts of hate had mildewed and had turned all black and the other one was nice and white. How is it we can do this? How can we do it through the power of our thoughts, through the power of our beliefs? Isn't it amazing? 
So what I am saying, what I'm looking to show through this documentary series is yes, we are connected to higher power. Is it possible we have divine DNA within us? And if that is possible, what can we do right now to better our lives and the lives of those around us? So this episode today was intended to be for the believers or for those who want to believe that there is something more. And I hope that it has given you some encouragement as to what the possibilities are within you. Understand the nature of God. Understand that he does have a fabulous sense of humor. And understand that more than anything, he wants you to have faith. He wants you to have faith and he wants you to express love. That's what it's all about. So I wanted to share that with you. If you have some comments that you would like to uh, contribute to this episode, put them in the show notes below. And you can put in there, evolution's the only answer. Or you can put in there, I believe we're connected to God. Whatever you want to put in there, I'd love to hear and see kind of as a <laughs> kind of impromptu voting where you stand on this idea. But, uh, but I do believe that we are connected to higher power and this whole documentary series will help show some evidences that that is actually true. So make sure you hit subscribe so you can get more of these shows to kind of look at these things. And thank you so much for joining me today on Are We Novice God? I hope this stirred some questions in your soul. Are you more connected to higher power than you think? Do you have divine DNA? Let's keep asking questions. Click on my face to subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.